So we're going to be drawing flowers today and then we're going to be later filling them in and starting to um, paint them in. So you have a reference sheet. I'd like you to use that reference sheet when you're drawing and try and document those flowers as accurately as you can. So when you're doing your drawings, you want to draw pretty lightly with a pencil. You probably learned from the past that if you draw too heavy, you're going to see that pencil stroke through the paint. So you want to do this uh, lightly. You are also so you're going to be drawing these about the same size as the reference image, maybe a tiny bit larger. And you can have some of these flowers going off the page. It's okay, just a little bit of a cropping. Um, no more than just like a quarter of the flower being cropped if you're going to enlarge it. Um, and you can kind of put them, um, scatter them throughout that paper. So we're going to be spending some time drawing these out. I'm going to fast forward so you can see it's at the uh, finished stage of the drawing. And it doesn't have to be perfect. These are organic shapes you're doing. But you do kind of have to look at um, where one petal tucks underneath another. That is important. Okay, so I'm working on that lotus flower first. And that lotus flower is a little bit difficult to do. So if you don't know what that is, it's a lily pad flower. It's called a lotus. So uh, there are lots of overlaps. There's a central piece and then there's these radiating petal edges. And then there's a rose and the rose kind of looks uh, like, like a succulent, like one of those little succulent cacti. And then there's the daisy, which is, which is also radial. It's going off of a circle and it's radiating out from that circular point. And then we have the daylilies at the bottom. Okay, so I'm not going to do this whole thing on camera because that would be kind of annoying to watch the whole process. It's time consuming. Um, but I am going to show you how I start it. And then I'll show you, I'll skip ahead to the end result. So I think I've told you guys before, I like to work from dark to light. Uh, that's a method that most painters employ. And it's so that you don't murky up your colors. It's also to kind of um, get in the contrast early on in the beginning stage. So you have those really dark values first and you can kind of play off of those dark values. Now, having said that, I'd say that um, your dark values are gonna need multiple coats because right now they're, they're pretty transparent. So it's almost like you're looking through a pane of colored glass and you can see the white of the paper below. You don't ultimately want that transparency, at least not right now, you don't want that on, on the flower. So I'm mixing colors off camera, but um, you're basically starting with the kind of like a magenta and blue mixed in. And then those petals are kind of interestingly colored. They're, they're these red crimson-y colors and then they change at the tip. So I'm using multiple colors. I'm using the magenta, but I'm also going to go to bright red and then yellow. And also we have that new color on our um, color palette that I put up there. And that's this, I think it's raw sienna, but it, it looks like um, a really dark yellow. It's in the yellow section. You can use that for the tips that are, the yellow tips that are in shadow. Because if you look at this flower, it's not all in direct light. Um, the petals, some petals are lighter than others, some are darker, and the upper right half is a little bit darker than the lower right, the lower left. And right now I'm ignoring the center, but I'm going to get to that too. So I'm looking for values, I'm looking for a color. It's more important that the values match the values in the picture than the colors. And there's that center. And I'm popping it in actually a little too bright. I'm going to go back in later and cover it. It's got some uh, mutes to it, some yellow-green mixed in and some uh, yellow-green and brown mixed together in that center. Um, I am going to go bright on the tips. So I'm going straight up yellow, yellow with a little bit of red, so yellow-gold on the edges of the petals there.
and there's the darker petals. So the darker petals are the ones I'm putting in right now. They have a little bit of brown mixed in with the yellow, or you could use that raw sienna color to get those. So I'm going to go ahead and work off camera to get a second or a third coat on there. I'm also going to work on the background. And there we go. That's what I've been working on. So I gave another coat. And now I'm adding some green to the um, behind the flower. And it can be kind of hard painting around the edges. So like trying to paint up to the edge of the petal can be a little bit tricky. Painting in between can be tricky. And you're almost like you're pushing the paint. So you're pushing the paint around. So if I put green in and the green goes into a red area, I have a second brush all, all prepared with red to push the green out with the red. And that's also how you can get a really nice soft blurred edge. Um, if you notice those petals, they're, they're a gradient. They're in kind of an ombre of <clears throat> red, kind of this crimson red to a bright red to maybe even a paler one, depending on which petal you're looking at. And then you're going to the yellow, of course. And I used a variety of greens in there too. And there is some purple in those petals too. So I'm using some like lavender purple so it has a little bit of a tint to it. Kind of tone down the center piece so the center isn't as bright. It's more like a muted yellow gold with green. So the thing about doing a flower is this study, which is what this is, a study is like a quick painting. It's taken me about an hour to do one flower, but I feel like if I really wanted to do an excellent job on the flower, I'd put a couple more layers on and I could put maybe like two more hours into this and make it look really good. Right now it's okay. You get the impression that it's a flower and it looks kind of three-dimensional. It's going in kind of towards that center piece there. Um, but ultimately, <clears throat> if you wanted to push it further, you could. And I'm showing you these because our next painting is going to deal with the outdoors or it's going to deal with a figure doing a person, like a portrait. So I want you to have the tools to be able to successfully pull off a flower or a tree. I know you can do a sky. You've done that really good. Um, but these are some other skills to put in your toolbox. Even if flowers aren't your thing, uh, it can help you with uh, other areas. It's always good to uh, practice with your painting.